Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Kelly. How are you today? I'm good, thank you, Michael. How are you? I'm extremely well. Thank you for asking. And um, as we were just discussing before the preamble, you managed to sneak in this interview because I had a cancellation. So well done to you. Thank you very much. Well, that's just my style. I like to sneak in there and get things done. <laughs> I, I love the name of your company. And I also absolutely love the visual, the image. And uh, I'm, I would love to hear, I'm not going to ask now, but I'd love to hear how <laughs> that came about. Um, so for anybody that's listening, it's called At the Drop of a Hat. And um, yeah, it, it just kind of, I mean, have you ever timed how long it takes to drop a hat when it hits the floor, Kelly? No, I haven't. But on my last VA retreat, we did mm. drop the hat so we could get a video of it. So we can probably come back to you yes. with the timing of the video. <laughs> Great. That will be interesting to know. And I noticed there is a hat on the on the on the cupboard over there or the bookcase. So yes, that very, is the the hat. <laughs> that is the hat strategically placed there. Yeah, for the listeners, you'll have to go and watch the video version so you can see the hat. Um, <laughs> brilliant. That's amazing. OK, let's get into it. So my question, opening question is very simple. Um, I'd love to hear your story and how you got to where you are today, Kelly. Thank you. Right. Well, there's so much to tell. I'll try not to tell you everything because we could be here for quite a long time. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> um, well, I'll just give you a little snippet of hmm. early on in my career. So I, I grew up in a household where uh, my mum was a dancer. My dad was a businessman. So I grew up um, learning to dance um, and wanting to be a professional dancer, as my mum had been. Um, and I was also very involved in the family businesses as well. Um, so those were kind of the two sides to me growing up. Um, and then I actually went to dance and theatre school um, in Liverpool, travelled the world and um, did my dancing professionally on the cruises and everything. Wow. Um, and, and that was fantastic um and then um then I suppose came the time where I needed to do more normal work in inverted commas <laughs> wasn't um, that working then were you not earning from that dancing yes I was I was right. earning quite well my my oh. first contract was actually in Dubai in the World Trade Center nice so yes I did some fabulous contracts and it was such a good learning experience as well, traveling the world. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what then, age were you when all that happened? Sorry to interject. That's OK. Um, so I would have done my first contract in Dubai in 1995. Um, and I'm trying to think how old I would have been. About <laughs> nine, 19, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant brilliant very good experience at that age definitely yeah. yeah awesome so I yeah I loved it and then I kind of got to the point where you can't you can't do that forever um that's not something that you can do forever you know dance will always be absolutely a part of me you know I I am through and through a dancer and a theatre person um right. but I, I also have this business head as well um, so I ended up working in recruitment for quite a number of years in various roles. Um, started out as a headhunter, uh, which was really, really interesting, way before the time of LinkedIn coming out. Um, so I was in traditional headhunting and then I ran divisions and offices for different recruitment companies. Yes. Fast forward to 2019, so I can answer the question for you properly. Um, I decided to drive to the office one day and put my keys through the letterbox um and I said I can't I can't be employed anymore I need to do something self-employed 
Um, and the reasoning behind that was my dad had been diagnosed with dementia um, and I was needed more in the support for that with my mum. Um, yeah. And um, our children, mine and my husband's children, were asking to go to different clubs, after school clubs, etc. cetera. Um, and I kept saying no. And one day I just thought, do you know what? I'm capable of running my own business. Now is the time to go and do it. And that's when I came up with the idea for At The Drop Of A Hat. Ah, so literally the idea was at the drop of a hat. <laughs> yeah, completely. Yeah, it was all very dramatic. Oh, I bet it was dramatic. <laughs> yeah. So, OK, because your mom was a dancer yeah. and your father was a business person, but did he yeah. run his own business? Yeah, so he early on in his career, he worked for big companies like Olivetti and Rank Xerox. Um, right. And then um, he ran a factory um, refurbishing photocopiers. And then after that, he decided to do more of a passion project where um, he was designing and building wooden buildings, home offices, um, pool houses. Um, he did a building for Nikki Henderson, who looks after the Queen's horses. Um, oh. So that's that's quite a nice thing that we've got that yeah. memory as well. Oh, wonderful. And um, OK, so he worked, was employed for a while and then decided to do his own thing. So you're kind of a mirror image then of your dad. <laughs> yes. Well, both of them, really. My mum and my dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, both of them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent a mirror yeah. image of your mum. Like you can cut yourself in the middle and they go yeah. dancer, business person. Yeah. That's exactly how the genes <laughs> were were separate were separated in half. Yeah, <laughs> that that's incredible. That's incredible. I I usually you're easy because I usually have to tease it out of people to say, so what's the history about why you're doing this? You know, is there some history in your business or your family usually? And people kind of go, oh yeah, there is. Actually, I never thought of that. And then, but you, you're easy because it's obvious it's your mum and your dad that have influenced her, your journey effectively. Okay, so at the drop of a hat, we're now 2019. And what did you decide then to do? Because you had a bit of a varied career there. Um, mm -hmm. what, what were the best skills you were going to build on? So I, I looked at the fact that my a lot of my skills are around recruitment, managing teams, business development. I'm one of those crazy people who I love um, a cold call. I love talking to people. I love developing business. Um, I just love chatting to people. So I had a long think about what can I do with those skills and yeah. I set up as a VA at that point in time on my own. Um, and the easiest way to always start a business like that is to look at previous clients, people that you know. And I quite quickly got a bank of clients from the people that I already knew. Right. Wow. From the which sector or was it from the employment side or yeah from recruitment so recruitment um, I, recruitment yeah Re yeah that's what i meant so, to say recruitment yeah so there were quite a few um clients who i developed fantastic relationships with um and i just i approached them all and said you know would you you know do you fancy working with me again you know i'm ready to go if you want me to do some search work for you, I can do some search and some headhunting or, you know, whatever it is you need me to do um, recruitment wise. And then I also started adding social media to that. Um, and then I just I got to the point where I missed having a team around me. And that's when I started to look at what can I do to build a team and make this business into something slightly different. Right. Oh, OK. That's interesting. And um, 
So you mentioned earlier on you love a cold call. <laughs> Where, where's that come from? Because most entrepreneurs, well, so-called entrepreneurs or solopreneurs, you know, single self-employed people hate cold calling. You know, this one included. <laughs> Why do you love a cold call? I just, I, I suppose I love people. I'm really always very, very intrigued by different people. Um, and I love asking people questions. I love finding out about their businesses. Um, and also, I part of my personality is really that I love a challenge. So especially if somebody says something to me along the lines of, oh, that person won't do that or, you know, you're not going to manage that I that's a you know somebody's laid down a gauntlet for me <laughs> right fascinating okay so effectively when you contacted those people you had worked with previously you had no worries about being rejected no but no you I think you kind of Yes, I've always got that little bit of fear, but mm. I'm the kind of person where that I utilise that fear and that fear drives me. Right. Very good. Very good, Kelly. I mean, I remember in my early days, I had to do cold calling and, you know, we didn't have LinkedIn wasn't that active. I mean, I've been on LinkedIn since 2004. Yeah. I started my business in 2000 by kind of setting it up but in 2007 proper and then I had to cold call people and I just struggled so much and because I was so new I'd always been employed I was so new I I, I did a little bit like at the drop of a hat but I didn't have any clients that I could call upon I had to literally go cold and it didn't help that the recession started in 2007 and then kicked in in 2008. And you had a few challenges, too, because if you yeah. started in 2019, what month did you start in 2019? Um, so it was right at the end of the year. So I was literally launching my business in December, just before things started happening in the world. Wow, that's that's rough that's so you literally had three months and then it all went pear shape yeah but again for me that was a challenge I thought do you know what I'm going to rise to this challenge because what I was doing what I had started doing was all about working from home having that freedom yes. not needing to go into an office and yeah. in my little online world Things were really happening at that time. So I just embraced it. Yeah, of course. It was perfect for you because that's exactly what you wanted to do. So you got this, okay, COVID wasn't a gift. However, the fact that people were home working and doing more stuff online would have been a gift for you. Yeah. Well, I think people's mindsets really started to change at that point in time. And a lot of people were just hearing about virtual assistant work. And then for me, I got to um, March 2020. And at this point, I was thinking, right, I want to push this business forward. I don't just want it to be me. And then I thought, well, my one of my biggest talents is actually getting those new clients on board and doing that business development. And I realized having done a bit of a, an exercise speaking to a number of VAs at that point in time, the majority of VA, VAs are really, really good at what they do, but they're really nervous about that business development piece. So for me, I was like, right, well, what can I do with that information? And that's when my business started to boom because I started to go, right, well, I can get the clients in and I can match them with the right VA. So that was kind of the first step of me scaling my business. Right. OK, so this is a totally different 
avenue you've gone down that you were basically getting clients for other VAs. Yeah, that's how it, but, that's how it all started, yes. Okay, but they're not in your business as such, are they? They're not part of your business, the other VAs? Sort of. yeah. Sort so, of. So if we fast forward again, so I, I had this idea about this matching service. Yes. And then... I realized it was too similar to an agency model. And I I realized that that's not what I wanted because I wanted to know all the VAs. I didn't just want people to be on a database. And yeah. then that gives you a, a risk if I'm matching, if I'm matching um VAs with clients and I don't know the VA very well, that gives me a bit of a risk because I don't know what their capabilities are. Um, yes. So that's when I started to think, well, I need to run this as more of a consultancy and I need to run it a different way. So the business then started to change into a consultancy. And now how it works is I have two sides to the business. One is the consultancy side of the business where I bring all these clients in and we look after the clients. The other side of the business is VA mentoring. So I now run a VA course. So I help people set up their own businesses. And I also run a membership for those VAs as well. So the VAs who sit within the membership and turn up to all my training and mentoring every month, who I know inside out and really, really well, they are the people who I match with my clients. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, let me see if I can get this straight in my head. Yeah. Um, so, so the model right now is that you have VAs. Let's say that the the ideal model is they sign up for membership. Yeah. To drop of a hat. Yeah. Mo monthly fee, presumably. Yeah. 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 They pay thirty nine pounds a month to be right. a member. Recurring revenue model. Um, yes. Uh, Here's an abbreviation for you. You may not have come across abbreviated as a rundle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an American term I heard on a podcast once where okay. they called, because this is, this is like the model that everybody would love to have, you know, just a recurring revenue model. And so they're, they're being charged something per month to join a membership for that. They get, two things they get mentoring and they get once you know them inside out they get a matching service as well included is that right yeah yeah so what happens is I put my vacancies into the membership and my members get exclusive access to apply for the vacancies right got it okay fantastic and is so what's happened to the other sides where you started like the recruitment and the social media, those kind of things for yourself. Has that kind of gone smaller or? So um, so basically, I'm now more expensive. If people want to work with me, they have to pay more money to work directly with me. So if they want me to do a headhunting or recruitment service for them or they want coaching from me, it's more expensive. So I have sort of more of a tiered service. Um, the... The main part of what I'm doing for my own lifestyle is to make my um, revenue streams um, as passive as possible so that I can choose when I work and when I don't. Right. OK. So. Um, but you're still giving the same services, you're still providing those services, albeit maybe higher priced yeah so yeah. the the main model of the business now is the training and mentoring side of things so people are either paying to go on my course to set up their VA business or they're part of my membership and then the other part is the consultancy services um for the clients so the VAs do most of that work now and I have an online business manager as well so she does part of that work and I step in when I'm required Got you. Okay. I mean, having 
kind of rolled that on from having started in December 2019 and then obviously dealing with COVID and then realizing there was this niche that you wanted to get into in terms of getting other VAs on board and then doing all the membership stuff. That's quite fast from where you started, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's a bit of like at the drop of a hat again. And um, so what gave you, I mean, you've already explained, so this is like an open and no, not an open, this is a closed question, I guess. But what gave you that, that confidence that this was, a, uh, you know, a model for you that was going to work? so quick i i just knew i i just knew that this was the model and i suppose also you know i said i like a challenge somebody mm. told me that i wasn't ready and that i couldn't do it and to stay in my own lane so part of me went well there's the challenge <laughs> well done well done that's brilliant. Yeah, we, we sometimes we don't like those naysayers, but we sometimes, you know, do need them to help us to spurt us on. Fantastic. Congratulations, you. I mean, to have gone from that, you know, initial idea to then developing kind of a whole new thing. And is this unusual in the VA market? Are there other people like you that are doing similar things? I mean, I've not come across it personally, but. So there are, there are some other VA mentors um, and there are some other people who run agencies in this market. Um, but I'd say I'm pretty unique. Um, my, um, my online business manager said to me a couple of weeks ago, oh, you know, Kelly, do you research on the other VA mentors before you set anything else up? And I said, no, I, I'm just soldiering forward in my own way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, we get very distracted when we start, you know, having to compare against other people. It's never going to be the same. You're going to put your own stamp on it. Uh, and your own ideas. Okay, so are we right up to date? This is it now. This is what you're doing. Yeah, I suppose there's a couple of other things. The business, um, I I hit the VAT threshold last July. Um, so I went limited company and VAT registered. Um, so, you know, the business is constantly growing, which is really exciting. Um, yeah. And... I I also launched the VA retreat. So once a year, I run the VA retreat as well, which is another um, income stream. But it's you know it's a fantastic event that I do once a year um, for VAs to come along and meet other VAs and do some more training, get some mentoring, and have some fun in some luxury accommodation with a hot tub and a pool. Um, nice. They all love it, and it's really good fun. Oh, wow. That's a great idea. So, and how many do you know? I mean, putting you on the spot, but do you know how many VAs there are in the UK or in the world? Or, I mean, how big is the market? I would say the market's massive. I don't know how many VAs there are. I would imagine that there's one, a, a number of VAs that start on a daily basis around the world. Right. You know. It's, yeah. it's a massive market, but I don't see anything as competition. And when I talk to the VAs who I am mentoring, I always just say, just, you know, ignore what other people are doing. You know, mm. there are always more clients. There's millions of people in the world who need a VA. Right. Yeah. And when you say that, th there's so many people that need a VA, Um is that because people are getting more used to outsourcing rather than keeping stuff internal? I mean, people can go to um, all these online sites as well, can't they, to get jobs done for like a fiver and um, <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. you know, they can go there as well, can't they? If they need something designing or something managing, they can go to to those people. But mm. is the world changing in terms of people trusting to go and outsource? I, I would say so. And certainly over the past few years of me doing this, you know, the world has changed immensely. I mean, I've now got clients all over the world. So um, I've got between 50 and 60 clients at the moment. Um, I have a client in Canada, one in Germany, got a client in Spain, and then the rest of them at the moment are in the UK. But, you know, the, the world's your oyster when it comes to this kind of world yeah yeah this this kind of work yeah yes fantastic and is 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 it you know ongoing business is it project-based business how 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 do you see it from your side so the way the way i structure everything is we as business owners we all want to know how much we're going to earn every month so the way I run this is that most of the contracts I have with clients are ongoing monthly retainers because right. then they know where they stand. I know where I stand and my VAs know where they stand and how much they're earning as well. Um, we do also do project work and we do packages for um, paid advertising as well. So we do paid Google ads, Facebook ads, things like that. Um, right. But most of the work that I do is ongoing monthly retainers gotcha gotcha okay sounds amazing are you enjoying it i i love it yeah i mean <laughs> you know the, the thing is for me yeah i'm really proud of of what i've managed to achieve and you know i i'm so proud of it but also i look at it and i go Right. Well, the business is turning over a decent amount of money, but I'm not looking at that going, right, I'm making an absolute fortune out of this. I'm not, you know, the business is turning over a decent amount of money, but I'm also, I'm helping people. You know, I'm helping all these VAs so that they've got an ongoing income. I'm training them all on how to do it. And that money goes back into the business to be able to do more as well. So, you know, it's not, it's never something where it's a selfish thing. It feels good because I'm helping the clients and I'm helping the VAs as well. Yeah, I think that is good. I think nowadays people, if the business has a purpose, apart from, you know, every business wants to make money, but if it has a purpose, an overriding purpose too, then it means what the company is earning means it's also giving something back as a result of it yeah you know to other vas and and people that are coming along what when you um you know think about the future and where this might be going um have you thought about that about other ideas because you seem to be quite quick on picking up new ideas and running with it have you thought about how this could evolve further? Um, yeah, I mean, I you know, I've discussed it with my husband. My husband, you know, sometimes asks me if there's a five year plan, and you know, will I sell the business? I you know, I I don't think I will because you know no. the business is kind of you know it's to do with me, and I enjoy doing it, and it's a business that I can do well into retirement as well if I want to yes. um, so in terms of where the business is going to go I'm just I'm just going to keep going I you know I come up with new ideas all the time I add new streams of income to the business all the time um you know we'll just we'll see where it goes you know I'm happy with it as it is and you know I'm always wanting to push it forward and to grow. But the main thing for me is as long as it's giving me that flexibility that I need to support with my dad, need the flexibility for my children and I'm helping other people as well, then, you know, it's what I want it to be. Yeah, yeah. And I think nowadays that's what it's about, isn't it? I think if people can do a job and it achieve their personal goals at the same time 
then that's a win-win for everybody, isn't it? Uh, your family, you, and and obviously your your clients and your VA clients. You've you've got multiple levels there. I was just thinking that um, what was going through my mind was, wow, you know, you've got these sites like people per hour, uh, you know, Fiverr, and where people can, you know, buy people's time, um, even on, I think on a recurring basis too, that, you know, is there a, is there a thing that's like a VA marketplace, you know, where people can go online and, and go to VAs directly that way? Um, well, you know, at the drop of a hat kind of VA service <laughs> or, you know, so people can go online and do that themselves or. Yeah, think I, I think there there is somebody who does something similar, but I'm not sure it's something that I'd want to do because when I speak to business owners, they don't always know how to utilize a VA. They don't yes. always know how they feel about it if it's the right fit for their business. Um, they don't always know what they're going to um, outsource to a VA. Um, and there's a real skill in that middle bit of me actually speaking to the clients and finding out how I can support and help them. Yes. I think, you know, this again is something that I'd spoken to my husband about quite a while ago when the business was starting to scale. And he was saying, well, you know, if you want to scale the business massively, then it can't be about you anymore, Cal, is what he said to me. But I think I'm not sure that I want to remove that piece. If you remove me from what I do, then it's too, in, it, I think it's too impersonal. Right. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because people are really buying you at the end of the day, even though, you know, you may push the work out to somebody else, you know that they're going to get a good job done, you, yeah. you know, and, and if they don't, they know where to go. They can come back to you on, about it. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, to have that personal service, I think it's important for people to know what they're getting exactly so yeah makes a lot of sense gully yeah well amazing well done i to go from where you started go through the pandemic and coming out the other end and you know being really successful with it what a success story and you know big high five to you <laughs> high five thank you very much yeah i mean you know it's it's been you know not to sound cheesy but it's been a really interesting exciting journey and yeah you know it's it's just for me I want to inspire people as well to look at their life and think well do you know what I want to do something because life's too short just to keep going to the office and do a mundane job and yes. I think you know my view on that is that like now I I fit my work around my lifestyle, you know. So first and foremost for me is in the morning, I get the kids to school. Yeah. I then have whatever is going on in the day for my work. I outsource as much as possible to my team as I can. You know, I'm always here ready to drop everything to go and support with my dad's dementia. Yeah. You know, and when the kids need taking to their um, clubs, that's, you know, again, when I drop everything and I go, you know, my son wants to be a professional footballer. Um, so he um, he's in three football teams at the moment. He's in a grassroots team. Um, he's in an academy and he's just been signed for the um, school boys team for the county. Um, so that takes up most of my time. My daughter wants to be a vet and she goes riding as well. So for me, the big thing is, I'm running a business, which I really enjoy, but I can do what my family need me to do as well. Brilliant. Sounds amazing. Yeah, well done. It's fantastic. So so talk a little bit more about the hat and the graphic that you created, because I 
I love it. When I saw your website and I saw this graphic, it kind of, you know, grabbed my attention for sure. Um, I suppose it's because, um, you know, I, I had the idea about at the drop of a hat because one of the things was I wanted to be able to provide a service where my clients would get something pretty quickly. And I think the name describes that. And yeah. I think at the time I'd been thinking about the 80s series of the A-Team as well. I don't know whether you remember. I do. Um, the A-Team. <laughs> I speak to a lot of people about the A-Team and a lot of the girls that work with me go, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember it well. Yeah. And and I sort of, and obviously I, I didn't want to go blowing things up like they did. But I wanted to mm. kind of have that service where we were kind of an A-team in this online world. Um, and then I wanted to kind of portray something that was part of what I love, which is my dancing and theatre background. And yes. I love musicals. And when I was dancing, some of my favourite shows that I did involved top hats. Um, I was in um, a chorus line and one of the the favourite numbers that I did at the end of the show, which I'll never forget, which was just fantastic. I had a, a top hat, which I, I used to wear for that final number. Um, and I suppose the, the rabbit was kind of that magical feel about the whole at the drop of a hat. And I just had this vision in my head and we managed to put together um quite I think quite an iconic logo that now people remember when they see it yeah so it's not just at the drop of a hat it's the rabbit out of the hat as well isn't it and it all has an Alice in Wonderland theme as well yes. so because yes I've themed it like that we can do the whole don't fall down the rabbit hole let us you know help you and I use a lot of the Alice in Wonderland wording in my marketing as well yeah yeah I love it. No, it's brilliant. It's genius idea. And yeah, I got my attention. It was unusual. And it's, it just works. It just works. And the fact is, it, it grabs people's attention. So what a lovely story. I mean, if you're uh, not that you need any advice, but if you're ever on net in networking events, and you'd say, I'm a VA, and this is what I do, I would ditch that. I would just tell the story about the logo and your background. You know, you just say, I could tell you what I do, but I want to tell you about my logo and how that came about. And because I think that's such a lovely story to share and it will be memorable. You know, the fact that you were in a chorus line with the top hat and uh, rabbit out of the hat and Alice in Wonderland and, all of that is, is just memorable in terms of storytelling. Definitely. Makes sense, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> I, yeah, I totally agree with you. And and I don't think I actually realised until recently that I do all the storytelling. But um, because my course that I run is all evergreen and it's online. And uh, one of my friends has recently done the course. and um, And she said to me one day recently, she said, Kelly, every time I watch a video, it's you telling a story. Perfect. Well done, Kelly. That's great. <laughs> but yeah. I think stories are better than selling. If you're yes. selling to people, people don't like being sold to. But if yeah. you tell somebody a story about how you've helped somebody or what somebody's managed to do, a story is much, much better. 100% Kelly, it stories do something to our brain that nobody realizes what it does. And I still remember to this day, I, I used to be like a serial networker and I used to go to in-person networking events. And this one day, a handyman um, explained what he did. He, he, okay, he said, I'm James, the handyman, maybe. But he then explained how he got into it and how he saw this particular church. And he said, oh, do you want your grass mowing? And they went, actually, yes, 
and he mowed their grass. And then he said, oh, do you want your plants watering? And they said, yeah, yeah, water my plants. That's great. You know, here's some money for that. I've noticed that whenever I water your plants, your tap's dripping. Do you want that tap fixing? Oh, yes, please. And he goes and fixes the tap. And he, he just explained his story by what he did for people rather than saying, I'm James, the handyman, you know. And that story still sticks with me. Not only that, as he tells the story or as you tell the story, particularly about your chorus line and your top hat, I see you on stage kicking your legs with the top <laughs> hat, dancing. You get a visual in your brain, you know, and it's because that's what's in my brain. That's a visual I make up, which may not be the correct visual even, but it doesn't matter. Now that's in my brain. If I hear at the drop of a hat, I can see you on stage <laughs> dancing with a top hat. And that's one of the origins, the theatrical, the Alice in Wonderland, all of that now makes so much sense. Yeah. Anyway, so there's a bit of, bit of a lesson there for our listeners and viewers. <laughs> um, Kelly, so interesting to chat with you. So tell me, how can people get in touch with you um, on social media or your website? Or why don't you share that with us? Um, well, they can probably find me everywhere. If they just look up um, at the drop of a hat limited, they will find me. Um, and you can see I'm there on Companies House as well. <laughs> so yeah. you can see I'm legit. Um, I've also got a Facebook page, which is at the drop of a hat. Um, you'll find me on Instagram as well, on at the drop of a hat PA. Um, I also have my VA mentor pages as well. So Kelly VA mentor, you'll find me on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, and I also have a free Facebook group for people who are interested in potentially becoming a VA or working with me. Um, and that's called the VA Academy. Brilliant. That's great. That's great. And you're on LinkedIn as well. I am on LinkedIn. Yes. Uh, Kelly, K-E-L-L-I-E, Williams. Great. So people can connect with you there too. Kelly, is there anything else that we haven't covered or I haven't asked that you wanted to share with, with us? Um, I suppose the other thing to mention as well, for if there are any potential clients for my consultancy who may be interested in my services, um, I do more of the strategic coaching work now with my clients um, and that I really, really enjoy um, because I, I, I help my clients be able to look at how their business is set up and if they want to add any more income streams. So that's right. one of the things that I really enjoy doing. So if I've got clients who want to potentially add some semi-passive or passive income streams, memberships, courses, um, subscription boxes, anything like that, or they're thinking they want to slightly change their model or they want to start charging more for their services and they're not sure how to do it. That's one of the things I love doing at the moment for my clients. Great, great. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, that's really important. And it's, you know, it's something that people don't necessarily have time to think about and, you know, decide to go on the journey that effectively you've gone on as well in terms of uh, recurring revenues. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I think we're concluded then, aren't we? Yeah, I think, I think we're all done. I think we've covered most of it. <laughs> Fantastic, Kelly. It's li really lovely to chat with you and to hear your story and how it all got started. It's really impressive. And I wish you massive success with the ongoing journey. Uh, I look forward to seeing stuff on social media where you're sharing information about it all. And I'll be sure to engage with it. And if you're ever towards, because you're in Wales, aren't you? North Wales, yes. North Wales, beautiful part of the world. If you're ever going towards Worcestershire or Birmingham, uh, let me know. We'll meet up for a bite to eat or something and have a chat face to face. 
That would be lovely. Thank you. Okay. Brilliant. Take care and all the best. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.